Hi, it's Carolyn. I'm here to help you learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to decorate this monster truck theme cake. And like always, I'm starting with my cakes already baked, filled, iced, and they are in the refrigerator waiting to be decorated. I have tons of videos showing you how I do that process, and I will link them in the description. And just a reminder, all of the tools that I use and any videos that I reference will be linked below as well. So let's get started. I have Gumtex powder, Tylose powder, CMC powder. It's all basically the same thing. This is mixed into my fondant. I only use marshmallow fondant. And you mix a little bit in there, knead it in the fondant, roll it out, let it sit. It's going to set harder. It's going to make it stretchy. The impression mat won't stick to it. It's going to make it so much easier to work with. I will link this below for you. So I kneaded some of it into the fondant, but my fondant is a little bit too soft. I want to make this tire tread, and I need to give that Tylose powder some time to work. It is stretchy but it's still a little too soft so I let that sit for about 20 minutes and now I have this tire impression mat and I measured the height of my cake and the impression mat is about the size of uh, the height of my cake and I'm rolling this fondant out really long flatten it out sprinkle down some cornstarch and then I'm going to roll it out really long now I have a video where I go into detail on how I make this tire tread and I'm going to link that below in this video I'm not going to go into too much detail on how I do it but you see how thin I rolled that out it was about an eighth, eighth of an inch thick and then I'm just using my fingers to press this impression mat down into the fondant. I don't want to roll it with a rolling pin because it's going to distort it. And I'm not pressing all the way up to the very end. I'm only pressing the parts of the mat that are complete, like it's cut off at that top edge. So I don't want to press that down. Carefully lift it up and then I'm realigning the back three parts on the impression that I already made and then I'm pressing down on the rest of the mat. So again, I go over this in my video where I go into detail on how to make this tire impression and I just want to continue the pattern all the way down that strip of fondant. And then I need to cut a little border on the top and the bottom of this so it just sticks out just a little bit over the top of the cake. That way the dirt that I put on there, the Oreo cookie dirt, won't fall out. And you'll see what I mean as we go along. Then I'm going to take my rulers and just make sure everything is nice and straight. And then I got my cake out of the refrigerator. That icing is cold and hard and I'm not going to mess it up. I'm getting a little bit of piping gel along the side of the cake. And then once I have the piping gel on there, I'm going to thin it out with a little bit of water. So I dip my paintbrush in some water and then wipe that all along the side of the cake. And now I want to clean the cake board so I want to make sure it's not wet and then I'm rolling that tire tread from one end to the other. I'm starting in the very back of the cake and then I'm pressing this against the cake as I wrap it around there. That way no air bubbles are going to form. Where it meets I'm using a ruler and then cutting a straight line through both pieces of fondant. Remove that back piece and then press that front part together to form a perfect seam. And then I'm just using a dry paintbrush to try to remove some of that excess cornstarch. And then I have some Crisco shortening. And I like to do this method to remove cornstarch from fondant and to shine it up. If you have a steamer, you can use a steamer instead, but I just like to do it this way. So I'm just getting a really, really thin layer of shortening on there. And then I have a dry paper towel and I'm removing the excess and then I go through with a dry paintbrush and try to get into those little crevices and remove any excess shortening. And look how beautifully that shined up that black fondant. It just looks so much better when you take the time to do this. And that looks good. Let's put that back in the refrigerator. Now I want to roll out the fondant for the name and the number and I'm using this gray fondant and then I'm doing this diamond plate impression mat on here and this comes in the set with the tire tread. This will be linked in the description. Again, I'm using my fingers to press it down there and I'm going to set that aside. Now I have that gum text powder mixed into all this fondant. Again, I have a piece of non-slip pad underneath my cutting board, an X-Acto knife, a Dresden tool, and a little bit of water and his name is Cannon and I printed that out the size I wanted it to be. Same for the number four. I measured my cake and made sure that everything is going to fit. Now this number four is part of my favorite numbers and I do have a PDF with my favorite numbers. I will link that in the description, but I'm using the pinprick technique to trace this on here. That way I don't distort the pattern that's on the fondant. And then when I cut this out, I just want to make sure I'm cutting on the inside of those dots. 
so that way you won't be able to see all those little holes in the fondant. And once I cut anything out of fondant, I'm going to take my time, use my fingers and my tools to smooth my cuts because the fondant is always a little jagged when you cut anything out. And then I'm just realigning that on top of the best part of the pattern <laughs> on the fondant. And again, using the pinprick method to trace these on there and then cutting on the inside of those dots. Now that name, I just Googled Canon with a K and then name and then clicked on images and I found that image and I just printed out the size that I wanted it to be. So once I smooth out my cuts, I realign it on top of that paper so it dries to the correct shape. And I have some Rollcom Super Silver with some lemon extract. I poured some of that powder in that cup already and I'm adding a little lemon extract. I wanna paint this silver so I am just dipping a paintbrush in there and painting everything, making sure that I get along the edges so the edges look silver as well. You don't want the edges to look gray. And I'm going to set that to the side just so the silver can dry. And I printed these out. I measured my cake again. I printed these out on my edible printer. And I have a video showing you how I do, how I use my edible printer. That will be linked below. And I'm just taking my scissors and cutting an even white border around this entire thing. If you have a Cricut, you can use a Cricut. I just prefer to do it by hand. I find it a lot easier and faster for me to do it this way. So I rolled out some white fondant for that Grave Digger logo. And I rolled it out a little thick because that's going to go on top of the cake. Now, I flip that upside down on some paper towels and I'm putting some piping gel on the back making sure I go over the edges that way the edges will stick down to the fondant and carefully place that down so no air bubbles form behind it and now I have some thinner white fondant for this monster truck logo and again I'm getting piping gel down on the back and you see how I'm curving the image down and pushing it down from one end to the other that way no air bubbles will form behind it now I'm using that white border as a guide just to cut that fondant out and then I'm going to smooth my cut and I'm doing the same thing for this one but since this is a thicker piece of fondant I need to make a shallow cut first that way I create the line and then I can use that line as a guide and stick the tip all the way down to the cutting board and cut it out that way I won't distort the image or the fondant and then I'm going to flip that over and use my fingers and smooth all of the edges and use my tools and just press all that excess fondant back down on itself so it looks nice and smooth I want that grave digger image to dry flat I'm just leaving that on the cutting board, but I'm putting the monster truck logo in a Ziploc bag so it can stay pliable so I can contour it to the shape of the cake. And let's set that aside. Now I want a green background on these so that silver has dried. I'm getting some water on the back of that and carefully placing that down. And then I'm getting really close and just cutting an even green border around this entire number. And once that's done, use my fingers and my tools to smooth my cuts. And I'm doing the same thing for the name, but I want the name all to be in one piece. So I'm making sure as I put the letters down, they are equal on the bottom and on the top. It's in one straight line. And then I'm using my X-Acto knife again to cut an even border around all of these letters. And I'm just going to set that aside on another cutting board so it can dry flat at room temperature. So now I rolled some white and some black fondant out really thin and I have this square cutter. I will link that in the description and I'm cutting a bunch of white and black squares. I use my hand just to rub it against the back so I get sharper cuts and smack it down on there to release it from the cutter. And I have a cake box lid that I just set these on. Let's set those aside to dry. And now I'm getting my cake out of the refrigerator and let's stack this. So I have my little sewing ruler and I offset set the bottom tier to the right and I'm stacking the top tier to the left. So I'm just measuring my straws and then cutting off that little marker and throwing that part away. My hands are always clean when I'm doing this and I'm offsetting these straws over to the left. Now I do have a video where I go into detail on how I stack my cakes and that will be linked in the description. But I want to countersink these straws down into the cake and then get a little bit of icing down. Then I got that top tier out of the refrigerator so that icing is cold and hard. I'm not going to mess it up. I'm removing the tape and setting that on top of those straws make sure that it is level I'm doweling through those cakes into the cake board and then just patching that hole with some buttercream. Now I want to start at the very back of the cake and I'm getting a little bit of water behind each of these squares and sticking it down like a checkerboard pattern. So it's going white, black, white, black, white, black. And you would not believe the pattern matched up exactly 
in the back. That never happens with this pattern. The cake gods were on my side. Now I'm getting a little bit of piping gel down on that white part of the tire cake because I'm going to put some Oreo cookie dirt in here. And for the dirt, I just put entire Oreos with the cream and everything in a food processor and chopped it up until it was into like a sand texture. And now I'm just taking a tiny, tiny spoon and just working in little sections because I don't want this dirt to get all over the place. And I'm just filling this in and making sure that you can't see any of the white. And that looks good. Let's put that back in the refrigerator. And now I felt like this name needed a black background. So I rolled out some black fondant really thin, get a little bit of water behind this green fondant. And I'm going to stick that down and then get really close and cut an even black border around this entire thing. Use my tools and my fingers to smooth my cuts and then I want that to dry flat so I'm just going to put that back down on that cutting board and set that aside. Now I printed flames out the size that I wanted them to be. Now all these pictures that I use will be linked in the description. I have some white fondant and do you see how I'm tracing the white part? It does have a yellow tip but I'm tracing that entire part onto this white fondant. So I did three different sizes just to give it a little bit more visual interest and want to make sure I can trace all three of these flames on the white fondant and then when I do I'm going to take my exacto knife and cut all of them out and smooth my cuts. And now I'm doing the same thing for the yellow. So you see that next flame in there, it's yellow and I'm just tracing that whole thing, all three of them onto the yellow fondant, cutting them out and smoothing my cuts. Then I'm gonna do the same thing for the orange and the dark red. And now I want to airbrush them. So I have a paper towel and I'm having the points face towards me. And you see how all of the tips of them are different colors. There's the dial on there that controls the airflow and the on off switch. And I just want to make sure I don't pull that trigger back too far. I'm using yellow airbrush coloring. You must use airbrush coloring in an airbrush gun so it doesn't clog. And then I'm just spraying just the tips of these flames and I'm doing yellow on the white. I'm doing orange on the yellow and then red on the orange so it looks like the picture and then I need to set these aside so it dries before I put them together so it dried for about 15 to 20 minutes and it was dried to the touch and then I can get some water behind it and stick these down just like the picture so I'm putting the orange on the red the yellow on the orange and the white on the yellow And let's set those aside to dry flat at room temperature. I got my cake out of the refrigerator and I'm just holding this name up to see where it's going to stick to the cake, make sure it's facing front. And then I'm getting a little bit of black icing behind it wherever it's gonna stick to the cake and pressing that down. And now I made sure that I wiped these cars clean. I did get these on Amazon, I will link them below. And I'm putting that on top of the cake just to see where it's going to fit. And I want to get a skewer in underneath that topper. And that's why I rolled that white fondant out a little thicker so I can fit these skewers and toothpicks underneath it, get a little bit of icing underneath it. And then I'm going to slide that down into the top of the cake where that excess icing is sticking out. Take a dry paintbrush and just remove it and wipe it in a paper towel. And now I can get a skewer underneath here. So there's a little hole in the bottom of that truck. So I'm just filling it with a little bit of black icing. I'm getting down some piping gel first and then I'm going to put a little bit of that Oreo cookie dirt down. And then I'm sticking that skewer in there and sticking that down in the cake. So that skewer will help prevent it from sliding around or falling off the cake, but you can still see it. So I'm just filling it in with a little bit of dirt to hide the skewer. And now this stayed pliable because I kept it in that Ziploc bag. I got a little bit of icing in the middle and some piping gel on the ends. It's just like the way that I like to do it sometimes and press it down, making sure all the edges are flat against the cake. And now I want to hold this number here in the flames. Like I just like to see 
where I want to put them before I glue them down. And then I want to pay attention to where the number is touching the tire. And right there is where I want to get the icing. I'm using black icing because I'm sticking it to black fondant. That way you won't really be able to see it. And press that down. And then I'm doing the same thing for the flame. So when I put this back in the refrigerator, the icing behind there is going to solidify and it's really going to hold it onto the cake. Okay, now this can get a little tricky. I want to make sure that these trucks won't fall off of the cake and that skewer, I'm trying to stick it somewhere underneath it where the skewer kind of jams in there and it's not going to come loose. So I found that on the inside of the wheel well was the best spot for it. So I'm just going to get a little bit of icing on the inside of that wheel well and then I'm going to stick the skewer in there. So you see how I'm kind of squeezing it in there on the side. And again, when I put that cake in the refrigerator, the icing will solidify and it will really hold it in there. So I'm putting the skewer in there and it's, it's kind of stuck in there. And then I want to put it in the cake on an angle, but the skewer's too long. So I'm just cutting it with my snips and then I'm angling it down into the cake. That way it's kind of hanging on there like a little hook. And then I just want to make sure that I get a little bit of icing on the cake where the tires are going to touch. And then I'm going to press the tires on that soft icing and that's going to help stick that truck to the side of the cake. And then I'm using my dry paintbrush just to remove that excess icing that's sticking out after, after I press those tires down. And doing the same thing for this one. I'm holding it where I want it to go. And then I'm going to stick the skewer in the inside of the wheel well. And you can see that it's, I'm like jamming it in there. Look, it's stuck in there. So that's really good. So I'm getting a little bit of icing down and then I'm going to jam that skewer in that wheel well. And again, I'm going to get a little bit of that black icing on the tires where it's touching the cake and then just press that against the cake. So the icing is going to hold the tires on and that skewer is going to prevent it from falling off and then just removing the excess icing. And then for the one going on the board, I'm just using toothpicks in those wheel wells and I'm pressing it down to make a mark in the cake board where those toothpicks were going to go. And then I'm again, I'm getting a little bit of icing on the inside of the wheel well and then just sliding that down onto the toothpicks. And then I just want to get a little bit more dirt on the cake board. So I'm getting down some piping gel in front and around those trucks that are on the cake board. And then just taking my spoon and scooping some of that Oreo cookie dirt on the cake board where that piping gel is. And here is the monster truck cake. How cool is that? So there's the monster truck cake. I just love this design. I've done this one before. I'll put the picture here. So the colors are a little different and Cannon liked green. So he wanted a lot of green on his cake for the grave digger. I just want to say a few things about this. Number one, like I said in the video, I have a tutorial where I go into detail on how to do that tire tread and I will link that in the description. The second thing is, did you notice how I offset the tiers? So I knew that these trucks had to fit on the cake. So I needed to make sure that there was enough room on the cake and the cake board for the trucks to fit. So that's sometimes you have to think in advance before you even make the cakes or put them on the cake board because you need, I need the, I, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I needed the trucks to fit on the side on the cake board and then on the cake. So you notice the bottom tier was shift over to the right so I could fit the truck on the left and then the top tier was sh shifted over to the left so I could fit the truck on the right. Now this cake on the inside, the top tier is a two layer, not torted four inch. And the bottom tier is a two layer, not torted seven inch. And I have a video where I talk about when I tort and when I don't tort my cakes and that will be linked below. But the reason I did a two layer, not torted seven inch on the bottom is so my cake wouldn't be as tall and that tire tread would pretty much fit around the side of the cake. And I mentioned that in that video where I talk about how to do the tire tread. And it feeds about 20 to 25 people. So I think that's it. What new techniques did you learn in this video? I would love to know. Leave it in the comments below. And if you guys want my recipes, I have tons of recipe eBooks out there. I'm going to link all of them below. I have my doctored cake mix recipes, my scratch pound cake recipes, 
all of the fillings and the icings that I use along with my favorite numbers and my favorite fonts PDF. So they are all listed in the description. And just a reminder, I have a Cake Academy membership program where I can help you elevate your cakes to the next level. All of that information will be listed in the description. Please like this video if you liked it and if you're enjoying my tutorials, I would be so grateful if you could buy me a coffee. My link is down below. And I would love it if you would keep in touch on socials and you could check out my website. And if you want to stick around, you can watch this video next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. And remember, it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.